All right. Good morning. Welcome to Coffee or Cross, episode fifty-two. One whole year of me randomly yamming, yammering at the screen. Anyway, <clears throat> let's get started. Okay. Found the fish. Fish gets sliced up in the air. Hit slice. There we go. Camera zooms back. Sushi shows up on this thing. Hey, where'd my fish go? There he is. Sushi on the table. Okay, let's move our table over so we can see it fully. set in a bit. <clears throat> Joshua True, Joshua True. Boom, we got a little dude down there. Look at that. Fun times. Good morning, Josh. There we go. Our explorer should show up in a minute. Two, one. Boop. Yeah, yeah. I like sushi. Yeah. Sushi's up. No customer. Okay, we've got almost everything we need. Let's start. Uh, let's start with what's next. What's next, Josh? No, oh, what's up, Keeb? What's? Uh, I was just reviewing where we're at. So let's go through the sequence again. For some reason my camera doesn't start correct. So let's do one sequence just to set it straight. It must be getting interrupted somehow. Um, okay, let it play out for a second. <sighs> Woo, we got a customer. He like kicking and punching. Yeah, yeah. Found our fish, fish gets tossed, slice the fish. Fish shows up on the table. We have a randomly colored customer that I just triggered by hitting slash. He comes over from the right. I have some expectation. There's a little bit of a pause between when he shows up. Ping! Come on. Come on. Oh. I had this problem last week, so the prefab won't keep um, the event that it's supposed to be calling. I'm going to have to come up with a script function for that. I thought I could do it all with the, the built-in event system. <laughs> okay. What's next, Keeb? What should we work on? 
Could move to animations. The fish isn't following uh, the right, going the correct direction yet. Uh, but I've got them following paths. Uh, I have spawners in the water, I think. Hold on. There's all of our spawners. Let's uh, let's let's work on that spawn system so I can put some fish randomly in. And uh, what I'll do is let's try one. I'm not even sure. <clears throat> oh, uh, you mean when the customer is there and they're there to buy? I don't know yet. We need to work through that logic uh, in a bit. So they get there. I think we're gonna, basically going to have two sequences going. One, when the sushi shows up, it needs to decay. Uh, and reduce its price. Uh, <clears throat> when the customer shows up, uh, they have a certain amount of time to uh, get sushi. So that's your window for uh, actually putting sushi on the table as fresh as possible. Uh, then what happens if uh, the sushi in time they leave and you get zero money? But they've also but they've also taken up uh, a seat at your table, and maybe they won't come back. Yeah, swipe. It's going to be a swipe. Um, but to do that, I'm going to move our testing. So as soon as I get like sort of the full loop, uh, I'll move to testing on the iPad. Oh, there is no loose condition. It's just a rate of. Oh, why don't we do it with three upset customers? I take that back. Uh, so uh, customers who don't get uh, enough sushi um, or don't get fed any sushi in the time that they're there uh, will bail. Let's see. I was planning on doing an endless fisher, actually, but um, the, other, the original thought process was uh, what we do is it's how much sushi can you serve during the daylight hours. Um, but I think... Uh, I didn't like that mechanic. It didn't allow for some of this other stuff going on. And I think what we do is the loose condition is three customers don't get served. And we start, we'll start with that and see how it feels. Uh, kind of like the idea that we're doing um, an endless fisher right now that uh, basically... Oh, it doesn't matter to him. It matters to the, to the customers. They're like, eh, we're out. I can't see what I'm eating because he's blind and he doesn't put lights up. So I don't know what he's serv serving me. <laughs> they do like sushi at all times of day, but he doesn't put lights out because he's blind. <laughs> but we're, we're, we're removing that uh, mechanic anyway. So we could technically do uh, uh, you know, day and night cycles and it just doesn't matter. Could be cool. I think we could put that back in. So basically daytime, nighttime, and he just never stops fishing. Ever. Ever. Uh, okay, so let's first make the fish follow um, what points he's going to. So what he's... Um, what BS fish test? Okay, let's try and make him um, point in the right direction. We'll make that our task for today. So keep episode 52. That's one whole year of episodes, man. Check it out. Uh, let's see here. Spawn at location, spawn at prefab. Where's our path following? That's not it. BS fish test. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. So here I've got a thing where he's just, he's following this path uh, based off of an iTunes extension. But what I'd like to do is get him to face, always orient towards where he's going, right? Um, 
let's do uh, I wonder if we can do doesn't kick out an event every time we hit a path so I can't make him orient when that happens by this method uh, let's look at um, um, not events actions let's, let's do let's look for look at Let's look update. So I'll have to change the target every time he successfully gets to a spot. Let's see. What's this one look like? All right. So there's a couple ways we can do this, Keep. I can either try and look at the path point he's going for, or what I can do is try and figure out what direction he's going, like what direction he's moving, and make him face that way, I think. That might do it. Let's see what this is. Mm. That doesn't look right. For the fish. We need to compute a yaw for the fish. So watch the fish. Uh, here, I'll do this. Now let's hide this uh, for now. Uh, our fish. Yep, yep, yep. That's fine. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, our fish travels uh, one point to the next. But he's not facing the right uh, right direction. Hold on. Let's see here. Oh, it's interesting. My shader actually makes him invisible. Something kind of nice about that. All right. So I've got him turned off. But watch when he turns the corner. He's traveling sideways. Right. So he's not looking to where he's 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 traveling. So uh, one of the things we can do is try and figure out what direction he's moving, uh, or I could just take the points that are on his path and make him look at those in sequence. But then I have to figure out the sequence, right? So it'd be nice, especially since I'm going to randomly generate. Or randomly create fish in here and have them pick paths that um, they don't have to necessarily you know it might uh, th well the current iTween solution I'm using doesn't um, so let's see if we can figure this out uh, oh you know what let's actually look for Orient No orient. No nope. device orientation. Follow. That didn't get us anything. Uh, yep. Look at there are look at functions, but they all require a discrete point. So uh, there's a look to actually. Look to. So look update as well. 
but I'll have to change this target every time he hits a path point, and I'm not um, generating uh, basically a path event, right? Like he's uh, reaching his point. <coughs> so, um, what do you think we should do, Keith? There are other tween solutions. So what I did is I this is actually a kind of a, a crappy like stub in solution. We should actually move towards like the final like fish pathfinding behavior. Right? Um, there are uh, so movement is working like this. Uh, on graph enable, delay for a second, and we are basically putting him on a loop path. So there's our speed. This is the path. It's a transform list. Uh, it's empty in here. I'll show it to you in here. Uh, and they, he picks these targets. The thing is, is I don't think if I spawn a fish right now, uh, I don't think he'll follow a path because, or he'll follow the exact same path uh, that is defined here. But what we need him to do is at runtime pick their own path, and then um, also look down that path. So. <clears throat> Maybe I just said what the solution is, is let's actually do the logic for how they're going to pick a path first, right? And how they how, how we want them to move every time. And then from that, we should get uh, uh, what... We'll, we'll get their path and I can manipulate those path points a little differently, right? Yeah? Or we can try and come up with a solution that basically is path agnostic which is what direction am I traveling? Uh, always face that direction. That might look more organic because like the doing, looking at the path points might end up with some, uh, some yaw issues where we sort of spin around. I don't know, what do you think? I'm sort of inclined to try the, <clears throat> let's um, figure out what direction we're moving uh, so that it's path agnostic. Right. Uh, so what we want to do is uh, actually event. Um, yeah, I thought about that. We can we can do that for sure. So we'll have like basically a movement and look at. Thing. So uh, I will need some sort of path array, right? Um, and let's do. All right, let's 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 back up a little bit. We're gonna have to pull this apart. Uh, on graph enable, we're gonna do this whatnot. Let's do. Um, uh, let's pick a path in single frame mesh. Yes, yes, no, no, yes, 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 no, yes, no, yes. Okay, um, I'm going to do this separate so I don't turn it into one giant chain and I can test it. So when the graph enables, delay a second since that seems to still be an issue. Delay for one frame. Ensure that uh, my owner object exists. Correct. So, uh, and in fact, I can double make double usage of this uh, spawner, right? So my spawn group is full of uh, tinier men. No, my spawn group is full of uh, different points, which are going to spawn uh, fish, right? And these are all in a a grid basically. I, I placed these uh, one night after the show. I went through and placed uh, a grid of points uh, that I can use as discrete spawn positions so that the player never knows exactly where the fish will show up. Uh, and what I can do is actually take this grid uh, and pick some points on it to be our uh, path every time. So basically let's um, Mm. 
Mm, this is going to be an interesting uh, action variable list. I want to add things to a list of game objects. See, let's do game object. Get game objects by name uh, after this delay. And what we'll do is uh, this string here um, add, sorry, create linked variable. We've got a string. Uh, these all have in common uh, spawn fish point underscore, right? Um, Copy that, let's go in here, go to this string. Here's the value for that string. Okay. Um, the, let's see, game objects. This should output a game object list. Uh, yes, this is a game object list. Um, oh, you have an idea, Keep? Uh, hold on, let me finish this script thought for a second. Um, and then uh, let's do um, action editor only log uh, add action um, where's lists lists game object list for each and list auto um, we're just going to list them out so found game object list kick out the um, game object every iteration put the game object to the console let's save this okay what's your idea uh, one prefab start point Choose one of those endpoints. Yes. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, um, so basically, uh, the randomness is in the spawning, and the path is local to the fish. So it's basically uh, it carries its own. Um, pathfinding points. Is that what you're saying? Like they're built into the prefab, right? So they would basically spawn at the uh, on the on the circumference of the circle, assuming that they're all, always facing a certain way. Uh, sorry, not a certain. Here, actually, here, keep. I'm going to go to key, uh, keynote for a second. Let's draw this out. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, let me. That also gives us patterns, right? So different fish will have different can have different patterns. Let's see file. Okay, uh, let's go to our whiteboard. Here's my blank whiteboard. Uh, we basically have here's our uh, pond, right? Keep it circular-ish. We know that uh, the bounds of the pond are about circular. Uh, let's do make it a frame uh, border thick line four five six seven eight. Uh, the color of this line should be there. Oh yeah, chalk. That's good. Um, no shadow, and we will do a uh, color fill. But this color will be. Um, let's make it this color blue with very light thirty percent opacity. And that gives us our pond. And what you're saying is, uh, somewhere in here, I've got a fish. Fish, 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 fish. The fish right, uh, carries with it. And let's actually, let's duplicate this. Because I think we need to do the fish idea first. The fish has... Uh, And we'll use green 
and we'll make this a color fill and pick a color that's pretty bright. Ooh, God, that's hard on the eyes. Green means go. Green means go. Green means go. Uh, and basically, let's see if we can do this. Uh, well, one point for underneath where... <clears throat> actually, so his start point is not... I know, Twitch needs a shared whiteboard. It totally does. Fish with spawn points object, right? Let's call this uh, uh, fish with points prefab, correct? And then here's uh, the way we apply it to this pond. Yeah, but I think that could be part of the fish design, right? Like the first few fishes you get will always spawn um, a certain way. And actually, here, let's see. Um, let's do this. Uh, that could be part of the fish behaviors, right? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So now, uh, if he's there, now we can move the fish around. Uh, the edge of the pond and those uh, path points will always be in relation to where the fish is, right? I'm going to lose my numbers here for a second. Um, let's see if I can do this real quick. Group them back up. All right, now we've got a fish that likes to carry his own path points regardless of where he spawns. Right. I think we still might run into like uh, spinning in place, y'all. Uh, but maybe we can, uh, I think we'll be able to uh, sort that out. Okay. Uh. Oh, send me the link. Actually, send me the link in email so that I can have it on a computer instead of uh, in, in the chat room. There we go. So we'll, we'll solve for this and see how it goes. Oh, app. Uh, let's see. You guys do anything cool for the uh, Super Bowl? Join shared board. Bloop, 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 bloop. Beep, beep. Oh, look at that. Whoops. Hey, Keep. <laughs> now that I've... Uh, uh, gone and screwed up the... Uh, what, there's no white? There, what's, where's the eraser, man? Where's the eraser? Oh. 
Ah, I see. Beep, 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 beep. There we go. It's nice. Oh, what's that? Uh, let's see. Yeah, my text, uh, how do you control the text size? Oh, the text color, too. Shiny object, shiny object. It's a face in a squiggle, a face in a squiggle. Okay. Uh, hey, Proxy and Josh, episode 52, guys. One whole year of Coffee Across. But let's do this. Let's do, let's get back to making our fish prefab. So, uh, here we go. This, go back to here. Uh, let's um, grab our fish and let's do. Um, woo woo! Woo woo! I'm a wooer! Let's see, is water under here? Water should be under here, right? Shrine rocks, blah blah blah. Okay, water is its own thing. Donde esta the water? So I'm going to spawn point customer, set slicing, look at points. Okay, he goes alone. Oh, nighttime simple water. Okay, let's uh, hold on to that for a second. We'll turn the mesh renderer back on. Okay. Nice. Happy birthday. Lap one complete. What lap? Let me talk about Josh and Chu. Let's talk about Willis. So I think we need to mark the center of this pond a little bit and sort of figure out. So like this, that's where the mesh point is. Let's get our fish again. So I am going to say that, let's call this, uh, what in the hell, why is my shit slow? Uh, let's call this minus 22, which gives me a nice solid integer. And minus 20, okay. I'm gonna write that down because I'm not going to create a well, actually, I am. Let's do this. <sighs> Create an empty attached to uh, this fish. Then let's do its position is zero, 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 which is its, the center of this fish. And we'll call this uh, pond center. And I found this by eyeballing the fish sort of towards the center. Now I'm going to take it off that prefab into the world, and it will always be there. So from this pond center, I can now do my uh, figuring to the edges, right? And this will be my sort of uh, makeshift ruler. On Z, that will go minus 50 units. Okay, let's call it that. Let me, let me kill this for right now. We don't need to script anything. But that might uh, bust, that might be off outside the pond, so. Yeah, fun times. GT, good times. Let's call it uh, minus 40. That'll bring us in from the edge slightly, maybe minus 45. Right? So the original uh, location on Z was minus 20. Right? And now I've picked minus 45 as 
uh, the new point there, which is going to give us a difference of 25, uh, 25 units. So that's our radius. So from, which means that circumference is going to be 50 units. So I have about a 50 by 50 unit, um, well, a, a 25 unit radius uh, circle that I can work with based off of where the fish is. Now, what I can do is, uh, let's see, path point 01. Let's do that and attach this back to. Oh, keep. If I put the path points uh, into the prefab, they will move with the prefab. Right? So he'll never reach the first point. So like if I put the prefab on the fish and he spawns with the prefabs attached, here I'll show you. Uh, he will do... Well the fish has to move. The whole prefab has to move. The fish is the prefab, right? So I know the solution. I'm just stepping through it. So uh, watch this action. Um, um, I'll have to do it basically on spawn. Yes, I'm currently moving. Uh, the whole ah actually you're right okay watch uh, I'll, I'll do it this way um, I'm gonna have to work through this hierarchy a little bit uh, let's do um, uh, create empty on this guy so where I'm doing my animation basically I have to create a new parent object right so create empty thanks for sticking with me keep um, let's see Right now, let's call it um, koi parent. I'll just call it that for now. Drop this down here. We will drop this onto the koi parent. Uh, and we will um, create a whole new prefab. So let's go, where's my resources folder? There it is. Okay. Now, the koi parent will have two child paths. Yes, continue, which is, and let's do this just for, uh, let's see. Uh, here, drop these on two. Um, Swim path. Okay, so basically, uh, the fish will move. I, I'm setting it up the way you uh, you're you're recommending, and I think you're right. Uh, two, three, four. Let's move these prefab points to uh, here. Actually, uh, we will do. Let's go back to this code parent. Apply this. Um, these path points, where's this one? Hey, buddy. Okay, let's grab this whole thing. Let's move him to the edge. Let's call it minus 45. So I have a visual on how far I want to be. There's path point one. Let's move it. Let's just do this. Let's do it right there. Let's take path point two, right. path point three, path point four. And thank you, Keep, for uh, breaking my brain around the um, uh, prefab logic. All right, there we go. Parent, apply this. Now let's go to the fish. I actually already have a place to define um, the four path points, right? 
but I might have to do this. I don't know if it's going to... It should work. Uh, wait. Let's see. Let's do... Where is it? Nighttime simple water. Let's turn this off and go back to our game. Actually, we're not going to see it there. Hey, buddy! Where's our fish? Where's our fish? I started him out under the camera, and now I'm not going to be able to see him. No, no, it's a good idea, because he's following the correct paths now, right? So, see, now he's moving from path one to path two. Um, and then uh, path point two will be reached, then he'll move to path three, and then path four. Um, the one thing about that is it won't give us a it won't be a smooth pass it'll be point to point and maybe it won't matter that it's not smooth motion at the corners uh, unless you happen to catch him at the corners I don't know we'll see uh, it might actually make sense to have the fish facing a random uh, yaw point but let's let's get this to actually work first Uh, well, we have to do a couple of different things. Let's do, um, wait, why would he unspawn? I follow what you're saying. Oh, um, hold on. Let's go back to the whiteboard. So uh, that's different from what I think I was saying here, which was he generates what his path pattern is always going to be. And then he follows it. Is that not what you're saying? Keep 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 keep. Oh, what were you saying? Now let's go back to the whiteboard. Convenient. Uh, let's see. Oh my God! Please give me a bigger eraser. whiteboard all right oh, I like the shared whiteboard action the country of hello is no more that's 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 right proxy Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're saying that it's not a multiple path. He has one point. He spawns, goes to that point, and then he's gone. Is that correct? No. <laughs> but it gets to that point and generates a new point? Got it. So 
basically the fish is always going to travel in a straight line. Here, hold on a sec. Uh, let's go back to here. Uh, let's ungroup this. Uh, we can delete. What you're saying is, and let me see if I can do this visually so we can talk about it. Oops. Is the fish group, and then we don't have to worry about like what direction he's facing, right? Because uh, he is uh, always going in a straight line, correct? Oh, well, I think we should try and go for the proper path filing solution because I think we can get there mainly because uh, as we go to add, um, got it. Uh, so I see, mm, I would actually, so I think what we would do is, um, do the, uh, So there's two factors here. One, uh, when we go to fish variety, I would like for them to have uh, different swim patterns, right? So the idea being that if it's a bass, he swims in a circle. So if I click around in a circle, I should be able to find him. Uh, if he is a salmon, he swims in more of a triangle shape. So that if I can sort of figure out uh, what the triangle shape is, he'll, he'll get there, right? Um, now, the other thing, and this is uh, the piece that we're, um, we're sort of ignoring uh, in, in the problem solving solution, but I think it's worth solving anyway, because you may figure it out, is you can't see the fish on the path, so you never know if he's actually following that path. Uh, the one thing that is uh, potentially misleading if we add like a miss condition, like a, a view but miss, right? is uh, you'll see what direction he's facing and not be able to uh, compensate for it. So I think we still need to have, you know, some idea that like, oh, I was close. Now, now I need to, to pick it up. So um, let's do, uh, let's go back over here, grab that one. I think that works for our basic fish, but I think what we want to do with this guy here is, um, let's move it like that. That is so uh let me group turn this one off text bold okay um is let's say salmon would be uh, oh give it to me give it to me one two so he does have a predictable path, right? Um, delete this, delete this, delete this, delete this. Uh, so once he spawns at the edge, you know that if a salmon comes into the pond, that he is going to um, always have a triangular path based on where he is. So. Um, I'm going to add uh, one more thing. Here, hold on, let's do this, duplicate this. The next idea, and I had this, uh, I was thinking about this over uh, over the week while I was uh, prepping for the show, was um, let's uh, advanced gradient fill. I think I can do um, circular. Okay, let's take this color and make it a little bit more that color. All right, and we'll move this in a little bit. Okay, let's do this. It's pretty discreet. Okay, now, got this, and let's do one more. We'll knock this one down to here. We'll do just color fill and uh, do, come on this color, this color, is that the right color? Yeah. Okay, so his hit, auto fishing happens within the, the center ring, All right? So one, there you go, one, um, two, OK, 
Okay. Area one and area two. Bold. A little bigger. Um, is uh. Let's do it this way. Text. Come on! Oh, there it is. Come on! Uh, auto cast and catch uh, equals near miss. Okay. Um, so if we have a near miss idea, if the fish, and this is why pathfinding is important, um, the fish. Let's put it here. Don't want to go over both of those. Uh, if the fish is in area two, then we have some idea of direction, right? So if he's facing one of these directions, I should be able to extrapolate where his next path point is. So it'll be like click, miss, fuck, one more, and then you move the click to, uh, let's see, click this, to over here to catch him, right? Um, and then, there we go. If I hit him here, it's a catch. If I hit it there, it's a miss. And so if we go with that sort of idea, sorry, I should have covered that earlier. I thought it was just going to save it for another show. Uh, but as long as we're talking about pathfinding and why it's important, um, uh, we should do that. Uh, but let's say this is a... Maybe we'll change his color. Image style... Um, let me do this. This color? No. This color. Yes? Yes? No? Yes? Uh, he's a different type of fish, then he's going to have a different behavior. Yeah, there'll be some recovery time or cooldown. Uh, I think, uh, so the, the variables I'm thinking about for tuning, hold on, now let's actually do this, um, duplicate this. In fact, I think what we may do is actually, actually finish the show here and I'll, I'll do, I'll come up with a better pathfinding solution. I think I need to do something better than just tweening. Well, I'll finish the solution and we'll see how it works. Um, tuning variables. So what's important about this is I'm, I'm already thinking about what tuning variables I'm going to have based on the gameplay we've got in our brain, right? And it's evolved a lot since this original PowerPoint, so it's worth us uh, talking about. Uh, tap uh, refresh time. Let's call it that. So uh, how fast can you uh, tap the water? Uh, how... Let's see, um, tap splash radius, uh, how big is the splash, uh, splash ring, we'll call it the splash ring, right? Um, then also, uh, let's see, uh, fish uh, behaviors, and we'll just call this uh, path. Shape, path speed. Um, here, I'll reduce this so I don't take up so much uh, text space. Pattern, um, speed, size. All right? Um, we're going to do uh, actually fish. Uh, Properties and let's see. Uh, I'll just call this fish properties, and we'll, we'll add this out. Uh, and it, it'll include behaviors, but um, value, so how much they're worth. Uh, we'll do some modification. Um, oh, you know what? We'll, I take that back. We'll do fish properties as behaviors. Let's see. And then what we'll do is uh, sushi prop 
properties. Um, decay time. Um, value. Decay time value. And um, oh, um, yeah, actually, decay time and value, I think are the only two I can think of right now. Then we're going to have um, uh, fishing. The things that will uh, affect these will be uh, fishing pole. of fish um, hooked, we'll change this to a number sign, number of fish hooked, um, maybe even uh, size of fish if we want to add some progression. So small fish can be caught initially, but you have to upgrade your fishing pole uh, to a uh, different size. And then also, um, I think there's some uh, aesthetic appeal, but I'll, I'll, I'll put that in the art uh, set. Then we'll do uh, sword. And here's our sword value uh, variables, which will be um, number uh, sushi uh, produced. So a better sword will get you two sushi, um, number of sushi cut. Uh, we'll get you more um, sushi from the same fish. Okay, and actually there's our fish property, which is going to be max sushi, uh, but not to exceed the maximum amount of sushi from the fish. So if it's a small fish, making six sushi out of it might not be, might not make logical sense. Or it might, maybe you're just that good. Anyway, um, sword uh, will give us the sushi cut and uh, numbers of sushi from each fish, and also, um, uh, let's call it number uh, fish cut. So if I have a shitty sword and a really good fishing pole, I might be able to throw three fish in the air, but only be able to cut one of them, right? Uh, that might be too complex. Uh, we'll see. Um, I think right now, let's just call it uh, how many sushi come out, right? And then, um, we can do, the other one will be pebbles, uh, let's see, well, I'll call it a pebble, pebble, uh, so I'll animate this at some point, but, uh, before, to create the ripples, he's throwing pebbles in the pond, uh, and what that will advance is, uh, this will affect the, uh, splash radius, Radius. Uh, then uh, catch radius is another one we can we can tune potentially, right? Like a pebble has a has a large radius but a small catch radius, so you can uh, see the fish up a bunch, but um, uh, you'll only be able to catch it the very center. So you have to uh, you know um, go for it. Then uh, uh, splash speed, how fast the, the splash expands uh, and then contracts potentially, so how big of a look you get. Uh, sorry, uh, not only how big of a look over here, splash radius, right, but also how fast that radius is there. So initially, we can make it really fast so you just get a flash of the, the pond. But let's say we upgrade the uh, pebble to a um, coin, and that will give us a uh, number of uh, skips. Uh, sorry, we'll just call it splashes to keep the uh, language the same. So basically, let's say I get like a coin instead of a pebble. So uh, I, I get a roll of coins. Uh, he can flick coins a little bit faster, but they'll also skip two or three times, right? Creating three ripples, which means that you might get a combo of catches. Um, I'm going to be careful about this one because it actually feels really nice to uh, just sort of click all over the place, but we need to put some restriction on it to make it feel about right. Um, then we will do um, customers. So th these tuning variables are really where the, the, the sort of feeling of the game is going to come from. Uh, type of fish preferred. 
max uh, tip amount, right? Max tip amount, um, number uh, sushi can eat. So customers walk up to the barrel, they will eat whatever is there. Uh, and then uh, the variables on that is uh, back to sushi properties, uh, freshness. Uh, actually, I'll do this as a, another, like a embedded parenthetical. Freshness with an H. Freshness um, slash decay time. We'll do it that way. Uh, and the value. So um, they will pay you the maximum amount of value based on its freshness. Uh, this decay time will start to reduce the value the longer it sits on the, the barrel. And then um, their tip amount is gonna be based upon uh, the type of fish preferred uh, and the freshness. So we can do uh, a max score for uh, uh, Pinky McGertrude. Uh, he likes three sushi, um, salmon, bass, and something. So if you can hit his fish types, uh, once you know them, and they're all fresh, you get a max tip from him. But he will pay you uh, whatever the freshness value is minimum, right? Uh, if they walk away hungry or get three, oh yeah, uh, let's do this. Since we're gonna give them a little bit of a personality type of fish, uh, hated. If you serve them a fish that they hate, they'll instantly walk away um, and uh, stiff you on the bill. And then um, talking about lose conditions, we can talk about um, uh, maybe there's a meter that is a ratio of satisfied customers um, uh, versus unsatisfied customers. Let's call it number um, satisfied. See, lose condition equals number satisfied um, versus uh, number dis. Is it two S's? Dissatisfied customers. Right? Um, at the end of the day, this one slide is actually kind of the whole design. All right, did everybody catch all that? <laughs> It is a lot to think about, um, but I've had this rolling around in my brain for, you know, years now. But uh, in this current incarnation, uh, in like a few weeks. Um, I'm not getting. It's over there. Pew. Oh, I'm so far away from it. Okay, should reset. Um, what I wanted to do though is get a list of these spawn points, but I guess that's not uh, not necessary anymore since we have four spawn points that we're defining. Let's uh, access the list. We'll, the fish will follow them in order, so I can pull that order out. Um, I just don't know when they'll hit each one. Mm. 
Let's see. Let's try. I'll stop. I'll stop. 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 Okay. Let's go. Yeah, here, so, um... Well, that's fiddling around. Hey, Keeb, does all this make sense? These are basically the numbers that I'm sort of, um, I'm driving for at some point. Once, once we get everything working untuned, the first tuning attempt will be to uh, start setting uh, base variables uh, and then go back in and I'll refactor some of this scripting to uh, kick that out. So this actually is irrelevant. Uh, but what we do have is we've got this piece and all, what I'll do is um, I think I do what I'd like to do is figure out I'm doing selected. Okay, I, I deleted that other thing. So, sorry, hold on. Uh, add action. Um, sorry, event. Uh, game event, global update. And I think there is a velocity. Get rigid body velocity. Uh, based off of. Our thing. However, I think what I need to do is um. Sorry, I'm thinking a little bit. He won't cast unless there's a hit. So uh, you can tap, which causes a pebble, then in the uh, middle of the radius, if there's a hit, uh, auto cast uh, uh, and catch, right? So if it's within area one of the circle, He'll automatically cast and pull it up, so it'll be like a uh, like a pew kind of a situation, right? Uh, let's see if I can do. Um, sort of hit that sequence, right? Where like, it'll go and his left hand will whip out uh, if it's in area one and he'll he'll pull the fish up, which will trigger the camera action. So the, the timing that we've got going on is uh, certainly wrong, or at least uh, not 100% correct. Um, and the camera will have to react to, I'll have to add events into uh, tap, cast, Etc. to make that sequence work out right. And so like this is probably the grossest uh, um, sort of sequence. Uh, how did I, I did this before? The one thing I don't have attached to our, um, you know what, I'm gonna do a little bit less of a scripting uh, solution for this. Let's go back into here. Let's grab our swim path, and we'll take these paths and add um, a component physics uh, sphere colliders. Do I need physics for sphere colliders? I just want them to be triggers. Um, 
Okay, so then I'll have a, a, a trigger, right? So, um, what we'll do, oh no, where's my center? Okay, is now we'll do, um, I'm gonna access this list. So add event. Physics events, no. Trigger event on trigger uh, enter. Trigger event based on myself uh, when um, add variable owner game object when I enter a trigger. And what I want to do is action. There should be a triggered by. There it is. Triggered by uh, create linked variable. Um, actually, let's do this. Triggered by add uh, condition comparison between game objects uh, on trigger enter. Compare the game object that hit this trigger, create and variable owner game object. And now what I'm going to do, the reason I did this a little backwards is because I'm going to copy and paste uh, three more times. I don't suspect I'm going to have much more than three or four of these uh, trigger patterns. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do it this way so I don't have to manage a whole ton of crap. Uh, and what I'll do is... Um, We'll get uh, access. Okay, I'll try it. I'll do it this way. I don't know if this is going to work once I go full prefab. Uh, let's do this. So basically, uh, we'll carry these triggers in. Uh, when, when a trigger is hit, it will be. Um, the new look at point. However, um, sorry, when a trigger is hit, it will take the next look at point. Let's see here. Okay, please. Okay, please. Okay. Please. okay. Um, then we'll do, I'll do this down here with, with, with me. And action um, game objects. Sorry, event game events global update on update and action uh, game object movement. Actually, I'm not going to do it that way. So I have an event to set it up, so it'll be more efficient if I do it this way. Uh, event action game object action come on game object movement uh, look at right uh, and what we will do is uh, if this is the same here we will make the target to look at the next one in sequence right uh, and what we'll do 
at some point is actually manage this list so that it can be, uh, let's call this uh, cross uh, 0.5 seconds. Don't lock axis, unlock the, well, let's not lock it right now. Let's see how it looks. Control C, Control V. I don't know if this is going to work when we spawn him, but it, it might. All right, now let's compile this. Oh, whoops, I didn't change my points. Okay. Hey, Josh, uh, Man, the, the internet at large has been strange over the last few days. Uh, my router's been resetting at high traffic times, like, a lot. Okay, so uh, to explain these four blocks of uh, nodes, uh, when uh, path node, uh, uh, path point one, gets a trigger event, uh, the game object that triggered it, if it's myself, uh, then uh, I will look at the next path point. Uh, and so uh, when I hit this path point, I'll look at the next path point, uh, right? So um, the way that, oh, yay, look at that, whiteboard photoshopping. That's fantastic. <laughs> Did you do that, Keep? <laughs> um, so uh, when the fish enters point one, he'll look at point two. And what this will do is across half a second, uh, he'll get to this point, not stop moving, and turn towards uh, point two. The place where this might look a little bit funny is an extreme angle like four to five, where in a half a second, he'll turn uh, more than 90 degrees. So it'll look like a quick spin. Might look fine for fish. We make great fish. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Keeb. That's awesome. I didn't even know that you could do that. Did you just layer it? That's fantastic. Okay. Let us... Um, yeah, I'll move the camera when we get into the game. All right. There we go. Ready? Camera more this way. Let's do um, this. He is not moving from point to point. Oh no! You defaced my face! Defacing the face face! Eh, eh, eh. So mean, Keeb. So mean. Uh, okay. 
that solution, this look at piece, didn't look like it was working. So um, I'm going to punt, tactical punt, because uh, we're at uh, fourth and five. Uh, and uh, everybody enjoy the Super Bowl. I'll see you guys next week, and I'll come up with a new pathing solution. I think I'll actually pull somebody else's uh, path tool that will generate that at runtime within a certain boundary. So we'll get, we'll, I'll make it a little bit more complex. All right. See you, everybody.